Welcome to the fifth video of my J Fashion Mythbusters video series. I think I started this about two months ago. I think it's been two, three months so far, but my first video in the series was on Fairy K and I did one on Lolita and I've got two on Garu. And basically the whole idea for the series is to talk to people who are experienced and have been in these various communities for quite a number of time and i've noticed that there's been like a lot of misinformation and misconceptions that are out there about these various j fashion styles and i also wanted to learn more about them as well so that's what the series is all about and that's what we are going to be doing today i'm going to be talking to two people who are part Sorry, I'm really joking. Who are a part of the Menhera community? Talking to Poovy and talking to Addy. And actually, I think, yeah, I've done a video with Addy before. Um, and it was the UV Me video. I don't know if y'all remember, but she is back and we are going to be talking all about Menhera today. So before we get into the interview portion, um, like I've already done in the beginning of the video, I just wanted to again reiterate trigger warning for anybody out there that we will be covering topics such as mental illness, self-harm, just some heavy topics surrounding that kind of stuff. So if you are not able or not comfortable with watching that or you know hearing about that kind of information please just um yeah just skip this video don't gotta watch it you don't have to put yourself through that so yeah Alrighty. so now let's go ahead and get into the interview with Poovy and Addy so I am here today with Poovy and with Addy so before we get into the topic at hand today i just wanted to ask the both of you to just give me a quick introduction about yourself so how you found out about j fashion and menhera when you found out about it how many years ago that was and how long you have been involved in the menhera community so whoever wants to start first hello my name is Poovy. i run a small indie brand uh, named after myself Poovy fell which is my full name i've been interested in menhera now for I think it's like four years. It's been been a while. <laughs> um, and I actually originally got into Menhera first through misinformation. Somebody told me, oh, it's like Decora, but dark colors, which is oh. not at all what it's like. <laughs> no. Um, but that spurred me on enough to kind of start doing my research. And mm. uh, actually, crazy enough, there used to be a Menhera thread and 4chan. Mm. And uh, the users of that, the anonymous users of that thread actually spoon fed me the correct information. They were very nice to me. And then from that, I got on the Menhera Discord. And um, I also used resources like FY Menhera and just other members of the community to learn more about Menhera and kind of, you know, fix my misconceptions. Mm. Awesome. What about you, Addy? How long have you been in J Fashion Menhera community? So I've been interested in J Fashion for a lot longer than I was actually wearing it. And it was actually more recently that I kind of came across um, Menhera and Yami Kawaii. Um, initially, it was like Lolita, Fairy K, the kind of typical styles that would pop up on Pinterest that I originally saw. And then as I started kind of digging into it, I probably came across like a very similar set of information that Poovy came across and many other people come across like the Refinery29 documentary. Mm -hmm. And that was like my first introduction properly to kind of Menhera and the idea of kind of a fashion based around mental health. So it's probably been at least maybe three years solidly that I've been kind of properly wearing it and, and really identifying with it. And I majoritively do that on my Instagram page as well and my TikTok page. And I try and make information about that and other J fashion styles. But yeah, Menhera and Yami Kawaii are kind of the ones I resonate with the most. Awesome. Yeah, I love your Instagram and your TikTok. I, it always makes me so happy seeing <laughs> you pop up on my feed. But it's awesome. Awesome. So let's move on to the history of menhera so for the both of you well i'm asking all these questions for the both of you but um what is the history of menhera and how did you found out i find out how did you find out this information i'm so sorry okay whoever would like to go first well 
maybe Addie should go first because I can like I can just splurge on it for a significant amount of time. So I mean, I'm going to be honest, like Poovy was the one that kind of taught me a lot about it, like the Minhera chat box and the presentation and everything that I got sent is kind of how I learned the history. So I'm going to be honest, I feel like Poovy should go. <laughs> I feel like Poovy's the best educated in regards to the, the long history of it and the kind of origins of it. I'm more of a more of a, of a noob in that sense. <laughs> uh, well, similarly, I got a lot of information from FY Minhera and... Um... Hoshi Yumekoi, who's a VTuber now, but he was originally he originally did a lot in the Minera community. Just kind of going out of going out of my way to find people who knew things, and then I took the things that they told me and echoed them louder in my presentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and go, um, but Minera started in the early 2000s, like 2008, 2009, back on the Two Chan board when. Mm -hmm. They had the mental health board was called the BPD board and the users of that board got together and were like, Hey, you know, we're not real. BPD doesn't really cover us all. Let's come up with something to call ourselves and to call our board. That's a little more broad. So they came up with Menheru for the board name from English mental health -er, And from that came Menhera. So it's a community and a word that came from the community in Japan itself to self-describe. Uh, so I, I, I find that awesome that it's, it's not like there's not like a single person you can attribute that to. It's just mm -hmm. as a community, they came together because mm -hmm. the mental health community there wanted something to call themselves. Yeah. And then on that Menheru board, uh, people would do a lot of vent art to vent their frustrations or feelings, whatever, whatever they felt like. Some people started putting that on clothing, uh, very DIY, especially at the beginning. And it still is pretty DIY. And other people in that community were like, hey, I, I like that vent art. I want it on my body. Please put it on a shirt and give it to me. Mm -hmm. So again, very community, the fashion aspect of it was too very community driven. And from there, we started getting the Man Manhara community exists as a community today, too, um, with a big focus on a, being a support group and activism for changing bad uh, to better the mental health and destigmatize mental health and chronic health issues in Japan. But when we go to the art and the fashion, uh, there's a few more aspects that were key. So there is a uh, particular art show. I believe it's just <laughs> directly called Minhera Art Gallery, but okay. I will give you a link to that later. Yeah, I can in... I can add it into the description too. Perfect. This is a Minhera art show um, that's held fairly frequently and they gather different Minhera artists together. So that's one big thing. There's also been a lot of Minhera in music and music communities that have kind of influenced the community growth. And then of course, uh, Minhera.jp, which is the main Minhera community site on the Japanese end. Uh, and this is, this is very focused on the Minhera community and not so much about the fashion and art, but all of it comes together. So Menhera as a style doesn't have a lot of strict rules or a very strict silhouette like Lolita or Decora does mm -hmm. or Fairy Kay even. It's a lot looser of a style. There are really, really two things. One, be accessible and it's clothing you're wearing. It's not a costume. It's accessible. And mm -hmm. two, feature vent art. Those are your two Menhera rules. That said, there is sort of a Menhera silhouette in that you see often a baggy oversized top with like thigh highs or like shorts with some print. So the top usually has a vent art in the center. So this is like a very standard Menhera top I'm wearing right now. I've kind and of got some that, thing going with the gloomy bear as well. Yeah, exactly there. Adelaide does a really good job of that like more common silhouette. So again, there's no specific silhouette you have to follow. That silhouette was popularized by Kua Oyasumi, um, mm. I'm probably pronouncing that correctly, <laughs> who is an artist and designer in Japan and started styling models in that kind of silhouette. And it kind of caught on with the Menhera fashion community. So that, that's what you, you tend to see in Menhera more often. So she's kind of like the grandmother of Menhera. Again, mm. there is no single person you can attribute Menhera to. It was organically grown from the community. But... Uh, She's considered the grandmother because her artwork and her uh, styling and her design work has influenced the Minhara community greatly. Awesome. Do you have anything to add to that, Addy? Uh, I'm Poovy. Poovy's just like the best at laying it all out. <laughs> Literally, like, again, whenever I have questions myself about it, I usually go to Poovy. Um, but like, I suppose the only expansion really would be in terms of accessibility. So along with the silhouette of Minhara, a, a lot of it is 
there's no need for makeup there's no need for like heavy accessories you know it's meant to be accessible for those who may have mental health issues sensory issues disabilities so anyone can kind of feel comfortable wearing it because I feel like a lot of people who you see doing it like you can do really extreme makeup I typically do a fair amount of makeup Uh, I usually do the kind of hangover makeup style kind of mix in with my own uh, style as well but um, there's no requirement for it, but you regularly do see people doing like very heavy, over-exaggerated makeup. And I feel mm-hmm. like that sets that kind of precedent that it is a very kind of visually uh, demanding fashion, but actually it's more just about being comfortable. I mean, even like I'm not wearing any makeup right now. I'm just kind of wearing some accessories, a baggy top, comfy bottoms, and that in itself is kind of totally fine for men hair. There's no requirement to have heavy jewellery, heavy accessories mm-hmm. or anything like that. It's it's really about being comfortable and obviously the representation of mental health or kind of emotions or, or whatever kind of through the fashion. So that's kind of, it's quite good in that sense for people who do have sensory issues and everything else. They're not required to to wear like a really tight corseted dress mm-hmm. or, or anything that kind of shows too much skin as well. That's one of the best things about men hair actually is that there's no a real requirement in any capacity to have skin showing you can have as much or as little as you want and again that's totally fine which is great for people who may have body dysmorphia or who may just not want to show skin particularly I'm someone who loves a baggy shirt anyway so mm. I'm like I love it I'm always here like in baggy stuff and it just works perfectly so yeah it, it's perfect for that oh yeah well um to elaborate on that a little bit too, uh, because you reminded me, uh, Minhera is the only J fashion style that is first for, it's supposed to first and foremost be for disabled and chronic health, and that accessibility is first and foremost. People who have various disabilities or sensory issues do not need to change the style to fit around them. The style is made for them first, and if it's if it's something, if, if you're wearing something that perhaps somebody with those accessibility issues couldn't wear, for example, heavy makeup or tight fitting clothing or um, something, something complicated that may, might not be accessible to begin with, then it it's actually takes it out of Menhara because everything in Menhara needs to be accessible because it is the only style that thinks about that accessibility first. I did not know that. Um... I've never ever, well, never actually like tried Minahara. I never really looked too much into it, but I think that's one of the misinformation that's out there. Like what Addie was saying with the heavy makeup, when I like think of Minahara, those are things that I think of like people with a lot of like medical like kind of, eye makeup yeah, well. droopy eye makeup, like syringes. No. See, <laughs> see that I think that's such a pervasive thing that like everybody like thinks but i'm glad that see i'm glad that we're talking about this so that people know that that is not what it's it's about but kind of like what you were talking about earlier about how in the beginning it was very big on community how would you say is the difference between menhera when it first started around like the early 2000s and now in 2021 is is it any different or has it changed over time it changed it's 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 changed and it's it's changed and it hasn't changed i would Mm. say Um, i would also say it's it's i'm not very connected with the japanese community um so i can't speak as much about that though uh there are people like fy minhara will share things from the japanese community that's been translated by the minhara community so you can kind of keep in touch with the japanese community that way Mm. Um, the community aspect has definitely never gone away uh it's it's more about the community and supporting one another. So we have, there's lots of people in the Menhera community who don't wear the fashion at all, who are just there for the community aspects. Maybe they wear more Menhera inspired or they may just, they may not wear anything even Menhera inspired, but they're still part of the community because that focus is there. The Japan community, I think has gotten more and more organized with the art shows and the um, activism that they do. And they've made a big positive change in a lot of things there. The Western community is, it's very curious, I would say, because I think it's changed in the style. Um, Menhera, when you started out, it was a lot more, um, less cutesy and a lot, a little darker. 
And a lot less, less on the medical aspects for sure. I think in Japan, it's still the medical aspects are still kind of secondary, but in the Western community, we've definitely latched onto those medical aspects and the cute aspects a lot more. Mm -hmm. And I think there's two reasons for that. Uh, the one reason is of course, the designers who have become more popular here, like Izaki Buzoku. Mm -hmm. and Kawaii Yasumi do the, those pastel styles. And then the other aspect is we are a lot more progressive on mental health and chronic health issues here in the States and in the Western communities in Europe as well. So we don't necessarily have to fight so much with the bare basics. Like, uh, like there's a lot of LGBT mm -hmm. themed Menhara in Japan, for example, because LGBT issues are not widely viewed positively there. But here we're a little bit better off there. So, mm -hmm. but we still have a big problem with the stigmatization of medical implements and medicine and taking your medicine. So I think a lot of the Western Menhara community has a attached themselves to those motifs, not just for the aesthetics, but also because those are the issues that mm -hmm. we feel more strongly about. I would also say accessibility has increased in terms of connectivity, because obviously the internet's progressed and there's more avenues to get in contact with people, um, more ways to find and discover people who are kind of part of that community, a part of that fashion or explore that. But I'd also say in some capacities, and this is probably talking more about the, the Western side of it, really, I feel like it's slightly more fragmented because I would say, for example, if you have a platform like Instagram, there's a, a more of a direct route to somewhere like Facebook. You know, it's quite easy to then go from Instagram and then find a Facebook page like the Menhera chat box which kind of houses that sort of community whilst when you've got apps like TikTok which has a lot more young people and a lot more kind of J fashion content on it it you can't really direct people to a, a pre-existing space it's just not a thing that you can really do it's, it's not very good for that and so people are almost creating their own little pockets and mini communities there which don't oh Poopy's gone <gasps> My camera battery died. I'm just going to oh, swap no. it okay, out. Oh, no. Okay, okay. We'll have to just put, like, a picture of Poovy. <laughs> I'll there. Photoshop you in there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Big, big rip for Poovy. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's that whole, um, you know, kind of fragment. Oh, there she is! Oh, yay! You got it plugged back in. Yeah, yeah, just it's the uh, the batteries just die pretty quickly. But yeah, having kind of um, platforms like TikTok and stuff, it's it's more fragmented because people just don't have that cross over so much with other social media spaces. And a lot of the people as well, like a lot of the avenues people discover Manhera and Yami Kawaii and kind of designers are typically associated with these styles um, and this community. They regularly kind of don't know how to just like find stuff. So they kind of get fed a lot of misinformation and then they grow off of it. And because a lot of the people on TikTok are quite young, they almost run with what they see. And as such, it's harder for them to kind of find people who are far more kind of veteran, I suppose, mm. within that space to kind of guide them. You know, um, it, it's kind of it, in that sense, it's more fragmented. So there's more avenues to find the community, to talk to the community, to kind of meet people and, and gain support. But on the other hand, there's more fragmentation because of the many avenues that exist that kind of have people discussing it because you will find all sorts of nonsense um, if you look far enough. So it is quite hard to guide people to the right spaces to, to talk to the rest of the community without kind of creating their own weird little kind of pocket community. Because it just happens, you know, people have weird little spaces online that kind of don't connect with any other space. On that note too, mm -hmm. I, when I when I said I started with through misinformation, but for me, this was before the Refinery 2927, mm -hmm. before that video. Mm -hmm. And when I looked up Menhera, I got to FY Menhera. I mean, like the friggin' 4chan page was able to properly direct yeah. me. But now when you look up Menhera, you get a lot of misinformation and it's a little difficult to know what is the correct information. And you have people 
like we'll try and look for Goodman Harris sources and then cite these wrong sources and it just keeps spreading and spreading. Yeah. And a big part of that is because the algorithms of TikTok, of Facebook, of Instagram do not promote casual styles. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give, I'm going to, uh, she's probably going to hate that I shouted her out on a video, but um, a friend of mine, Cupcake Vice, mm -hmm. does what I consider the most like like the most menhara a menhara outfit can be. And her styling is very simple and their, their outfits are practical based around her commute and what she's doing. And she has like almost no followers because these are these casual styles and Instagram does not promote that. Mm. Whereas when you've got people doing the elf guts, drip, drip, yeah. drippy glitter makeup and these complicated outfits, and they're tagging their social media, they, they're tagging 100 different tags to get on the Instagram feeds, on your TikTok feeds, well, the algorithms are going to promote that. And unfortunately, that's what's going to come to the top when you search Menhara. And, and I can't like, it's frustrating, because on the one hand, I get annoyed by people mistagging. Um, but on the other hand, I also as a creator, I understand that working with social media is a huge pain. And sometimes mm -hmm. you have to miss that even get on the radar of anything you're putting all sorts of tags that aren't even relevant to even to just reach your followers so mm -hmm. it's a problem and it's a difficult problem and again being me and adelaide have both said we we aren't the gurus of menhara really we get our information yeah. from other people but both of us adelaide especially have a little bit of a larger platform so we're able to just kind of take that information from the good sources and just like megaphone it and yell it into the abyss yeah. <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> well, it's like you said as well, like I find the posts where I do far more extreme makeup looks because I, I, I love playing around with makeup. It's, it is fun, but I don't usually go out in like, I don't go out in the drippy makeup or anything, you know. Mm. I go out in the kind of hangover makeup, um, which really is, it, although it's still bold, it's, it's, not, it's not kind of um, almost performative in that sense. It's kind of what I find comfortable for myself. Um, but the posts where I'm kind of doing a fairly kind of a casual, cute kind of uh, yami kawaii style look where maybe I'll have a baggy shirt. I have my uh, Eglian creations uh, bag or something, platforms, loose socks. I'll have like a look that won't perform anywhere near as well as when I do a very extreme look. And so it is kind of difficult because people will only really discover what you do or discover you're part of that community when you do things that are, are not actually really part of a, a realistic kind of, I hate to say menhera lifestyle, but as someone who is kind of actually, someone who's very invested into it, you know, I'm more myself in terms of uh, accuracy towards what the style is, is about when I'm actually just at home, like sitting about, relaxing, because the clothes I'm wearing accommodate that. But obviously when I, I put stuff on for Instagram or whatever, that is accommodating other people typically. And that's and that's the kind of difficult thing. A lot of people find out about the uh, about the style through misinformation, mm -hmm. um, or through controversy. Um, so navigating that as someone who is new to the community or new to the style is is difficult. Regarding that refinery twenty nine uh, video, because uh, yeah. I was looking up, uh, you know, trying to do as much research, yeah, research research as I could before doing the interview, and I watched that whole video again. I remember watching it, you know, when it first came out years ago, and I remember the interviewer when they tried on the style, and they kept saying like, "I feel so uncomfortable, like this feels so yeah. weird." I don't know, this is, this is, it felt kind of weird to me when they were saying that, I'm but... Yami Kawaii, though. They were, they were doing something. They weren't quite doing Menhara. They were mm. doing Yami Kawaii. Okay. And so mm. they, they uh, well, so that whole video is um, interesting. I actually, I don't personally have a big problem with that video in itself, because that video is not a video that's supposed to be the guide to Menhara. Mm. That video is a look at, a short, quick look at Izaki Bizoko and his work. Mm -hmm. And in that context, everything in that video, perfectly fine. It's Izaki Bizoko and his work, and he's talking specifically about what he does. And that video was focused more on Yami Kawaii because he specifically does, at the time at least, more Yami Kawaii. So I didn't have a problem with that video at all. Unfortunately, people have taken that video to be like, this is Menhara, this mm -hmm. is all of it now. And they've taken this short glimpse that is one particular artist's work and turned it into this whole thing. 
So I don't, I don't have really hate for Refinery29 because they did not set out to make a How To Minhera video. They just set mm-hmm. out to talk to one creator. And same thing with the um, the interviewer being uncomfortable with the Yami Kawaii. It's like, the Yami Kawaii is a little different than Minhera in that it is a little, like Minhera is not really to be edgy, mm-hmm. but Yami Kawaii can be sometimes to be edgy. It's sometimes to, to juxtapose that cute and dark motifs and give you that more edgy feel. Because it's like the, the um, Yami Kawaii is the opposite of Yume Kawaii, right? Is that a right statement? No, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, <laughs> I suppose like Yume Kawaii is kind of like cute associated with pastels. Like mm-hmm. it's almost, Yume Kawaii really kind of borders a lot of time into fairy K territory. It's more just kind of just cute. It's just cute fashion, cute, sweet. Um, it has a lot of overlaps with fairy cake, in my opinion. Whilst Yami Kawaii, I mean, the closest style I could I could kind of slightly slide it towards would maybe be Guro, but even then that would be kind of a, a, a not really accurate. Because obviously Yami Kawaii is just like cute, sweet. Um, Yami Kawaii is sick, cute, and, and that in itself is not really the opposite because that would just be dark, cute. It's, it's like when somebody says, when you turn that frown upside down, <laughs> an upside down frown doesn't look actually like a smile, mm. you know? it's it's similar but it's not quite right it's not it's not the opposite i think it's because it's the motifs and stuff are are starkly different than they're not like sad they're just dark um and the color scheme isn't always dark you know you can Mm -hmm. have pastel colors in yami kawaii as well as dark colors there's not so much a a color pattern rule whilst again with yume really the associated colors are kind of pastels brights and, and it kind of cuts off there typically there's, there's an overlap between the two styles for certain. Um, I think there was a period where Yume Kawaii became a lot more like Yami Kawaii for a bit. And then now I think it's, I think it's evolved back out of it and it's significantly less. Um, I, would, I would also say that when we use specific words to describe specific styles, we're usually extremely specific when we're using those words here in the West. But in Japan, um, they aren't necessarily used to be that specific. You can be you. You might use you might use those words the same way I would describe my outfit as black and red. You may you would maybe describe something as yami kawaii or yumi kawaii with that same level. You're not necessarily making it a super specific word, and so that's why you will see a lot of different things described as yami kawaii, yumi kawaii attached to them, and they might be the same thing. And you might use this one word one day and another word another day. It's it's a little more like hazy. <laughs> So in the context of Minhera, how would you say is the difference between Minhera and Yami Kawaii? And I guess I'll throw these other two in as well. Um, Gurokawa and Medikawa. Those four different things that, I mean, from someone on the outside, like, it looks like they all kind of overlap with each other, like, certain things. But how would you tell is, like, the main differences between these four? So Minhera... Yami Kawaii, Gurokawa, and Medikawa. I mean, I'd probably say, like, for Menhera, I would say it's intention. Like, Menhera mm-hmm. kind of comes from, again, accessibility, um, lifestyle. It's not so much to be visually bold in such a way. Like, um, you know, obviously, decor is super bright and super colorful. And that's kind of decor's main thing. It, it's just being really bright, it's having fun, accessorizing yourself with whatever makes you happy. Whilst with obviously Menhera, it can be very low key. It can just be comfortable and ventart, which really encompasses a graphic t-shirt and joggers. And that would still be completely fine. Whilst obviously styles like Gura Kawaii are very gory, which I would really say is, is something that you tend to avoid with Menhera. Because obviously, again, the accessibility part kind of wants you to steer away from triggers as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and keeping in mind that overly kind of gory like blood, you know like injuries and stuff like that that actually is kind of not making it accessible anymore because people might feel uncomfortable with wearing it or seeing it so with guru it, it's definitely kind of again the kind of grotesque it's it's away from the advocacy and, and menhera's whole point is accessibility and, and the awareness of mental health and and kind of the community and then medical I, again i would say has more in you know in common with guru than it does with menhera because although menhera uses 
medical motifs sometimes within the artwork or within the accessories. You know, many kawaii's can just be very surface level. There's no message behind somebody in kind of a nurse's style uniform or with a nurse's hat on. That doesn't really encompass any sort of message out there because it is just a thing. It's just a visual aspect. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I think really the, the main difference is the intent behind what you're wearing and how you're styling yeah. yourself. Um, Medikoi, Gurukawa, and um, what was the, the last one? A yami. Yami yes. Kawaii, yes. All of those, those three are aesthetic centered. They are the aesthetic first and foremost, whereas Minhara is the mental health or community in Japan first and foremost, and the style is just attached to it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big, another big distinguishing factor is it is and why we care so much about misinformation and mistagging, because it's not just an aesthetic, it's not just a style, there's this whole mental health or community attached to it, who has been fighting for a very long time to, to better uh, the state of mental health and chronic health in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, so then from that, I'll start with the one that's the least like Menhera. So Gura Kawaii, I would say, really has no overlap with Menhera at all. It's just, as in the name, cute gore gory but also cute that's it and that's all you need there then um medi kawaii similar to how cute and gura kawaii is cute and gory medi kawaii is medical and cute so something any any medical motifs but cute that's it just simple aesthetic and yami kawaii you come back a little bit more with the edgy trying to use um cuteness to talk about edgy or taboo topics so you have a little bit more of that. Um, it is usually in dark colors, but not always. So I have here in my, my slides, um, Yami Kawaii is combining cuteness with darkness. So there is a little bit more of like a little, like a, a through a line that's not just a motif and cute, but it's still aesthetic and it's still that simple kind of one line. And then like Adelaide was saying, Menhera is your intention first. Like, you have a thing you are venting about in your outfit that ties into everything. And the aesthetic of it doesn't really matter at all. It's the vent. So like I, my, my shirt right now is it's on the topic of PTSD and being a PTSD survivor. So that's what makes it Minhara. Where And you can see the art style is very American because an American friend of mine drew this art for me. Mm. And it's, you know, red and the character is just kind of, you know, wearing whatever. There's no cute motifs there's no particular style to it so that's yeah the aesthetic comes secondary to menhera and there's not even an aesthetic limitation so the statement of menhera is not an aesthetic is a factual one more yeah. or less yes uh, i think menhera menhera can menhera can be an aesthetic and menhera is also not an aesthetic okay <laughs> so it both exists at the same time okay okay i think i'm starting to understand <laughs> a little bit more. We did talk about Bisuko Izaki a little bit earlier, um, but I wanted to ask, uh, who is Minhara-chan? Minhara-chan, right? Yeah, Minhara-chan, that's it. She's heavily associated with, um, incorrectly, I kind of feel like I should add, but she's kind of heavily associated with Minhara and obviously Yami Kawai fashion and a lot of people wrongly attribute her as the start of Menhera because of the name so a lot of people kind of get the confusion there that she kind of created it like you will see a lot in comments like oh mm. Menhera isn't a thing it's that's just a character which oh that oh that, that annoys me that gets on my gets on my boobs a little bit that annoys me but yeah it's she she's a character that was obviously created by Izaki. Uh, she's a vent art character. So originally was created as vent art for him during I believe it's when he was in college. He was studying, mm. and during that time it was very stressful, overwhelmed, not feeling good, suicidal, and everything. And that was kind of his way of outletting those emotions. And she ended up taking off and becoming um, basically her own kind of brand and since then has kind of become more commercialized she was obviously featured in the refinery 29 um kind of youtube video which again i think is where a lot of people get that direct association of izaki's work to menhera and yami kawaii but she's obviously had collaborations with big brands such as acdc rag look and mm. flavor those are other ones kind of out there and obviously indie brand petitu confetu um mm. which do like little accessories and stuff so she's had quite widespread notoriety but her whole kind of graphic comic series 
um and manga but i almost feel like it's, it's graphic novel because it's quite sad like it's it almost feels a bit more like a webtoon style of, as opposed to like a, a really direct narrative that's ongoing but i could be wrong there because obviously it's harder to find that here in the west than it is obviously in japan but basically herself and kind of two friends friends um but two kind of other characters are all part of the risk cut warriors who are essentially magical girls that transform through harming themselves which in itself what? is is where a lot of controversy comes from yeah they will cut themselves with a box cutter charm and then they will transform into magical girls apart from yume kawa who is just a fan girl who relies on usatan who i'm currently wearing on my finger to kind of give her temporary magical power so she's almost just like an obsessive fan okay. of these two and wants to be part of it so she's like a, a follower of these two but it technically counts but yeah so they they transform through self-harm they fight evil there's like loads of other side characters who sport different fashions as well so you have like a gothic lolita character in there mm-hmm. um or a character that wears gothic lolita probably mm-hmm. definitely gothic lolita but yeah the kind of controversy comes from the the direct links to self-harm uh, yeah. occult imagery so they have uh the shin i think how was it called um shinto shrine symbol i can't remember the name of it but it's uh, like a little star shape that many people confuse with the star of david mm. it's not but they all kind of wear that and i think it's meant to ward off bad omens um in shinto shrines but yeah that she's like a character that was created as ventart that then became very profitable <laughs> um very profitable yep. and very popular because of the very i guess controversial nature of the characters you know in in some of the badges and pins i have because i do have a lot of minhera chan merch because i i do like it and i do resonate with it and i also kind of like collecting it because i feel like it's quite an oddity really in, in the j fashion world because it's just so it sticks out so weirdly it, it doesn't fit anywhere really but in some of the badges you will see just fresh self hard marks not covered on the characters that's not uncommon you'll see death uh, photographs as merchandise you'll see you know all sorts of stuff nooses guns um there's scarves that izaki has done mm. uh which have guns knives box cutters pills all over them that kind of again directly associate with minhera chan who is it's kind of like the figurehead i say it with quotations the figurehead of the community um according to many people who first come across it i would say the false prophet but yes um i get yeah, a, note, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> a note though it is M- minhera chan is a satire of the magical girl genre mm-hmm. so all of these like the self-harm transformations, the mm-hmm. motifs are all kind of tongue in cheek. They're supposed to be kind of mm-hmm. ridiculous mm-hmm. because it's satirizing the magical girl community or the, the genre. The idea being that um, Izaki Bizoko was seeing, uh, there's a misconception that, that if you're cute, if you're kawaii in Japan, then you clearly, your life must be perfect. You can't possibly have any problems. And there's a double-edged sword of that. And the first is of course, people thinking like, oh, you're so pretty, you're so cute, you're into kawaii, your life must be perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other end of that, which is the internalizing of it, which is I'm cute, I'm into kawaii, there's nothing wrong with my life, and I don't need to fix anything. So those two moods, Izaki was fighting against that a little bit by taking Menhara-chan and saying, okay, well, I'm going to take your cute magical girl motifs, and I'm going to put all these dark topics in there, and you're going to have to look at them. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, since, since, this turned it's still like a the work of it still features a lot of vent art um but since it's turned a little bit more into like a commercial success um he's taken i believe he's taken the risk cutting transformation scenes out of it and Mm, uh taken away some of that harsh satire out of it but but that's that's kind of why that's in there it's not it's not in there without a purpose it's in there to be part of the satire i don't know how much you want me to get into izaki bizoko and his personal drama or not though uh, yeah I'm, he's he's got a lot of yeah i i cuz yeah. i have heard certain things over the years i mean it was whatever makes you comfortable and you think that you know people should know about but regarding menhera chan because yeah like i was saying i have been doing research i've been watching videos i've been watching videos on youtube where it's like basically what is menhera and they start off with menhera chan and they're like yeah she she's she did that 
we love our queen <laughs> and so I was, I was, okay okay i see so i'm glad we're doing this video and we are talking about that the next question some people have said that they feel like menhera glorifies or romanticizes mental illness and so what are your thoughts on that and how would you respond to that statement i would say there's two there's two ends to that the first end is a lot of people will see the mistagged Menhera outfits like a yandere nurse and think that's yeah. Menhera and that's not Menhera. <laughs> so a lot of those comments are directed at those outfits. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, that is a costume of somebody in a yandere nurse outfit. And, you know, more power to them, but that's not Menhera. Um, and the other end of that is the point of Menhera is to destigmatize it. For example, you very often see self-harm scars in Menhera work. And that's because we need to normalize that. Real people have self-harm scars and they're, they might be visible, but we shouldn't treat those scars any differently than we treat like somebody who's got a knee scar from scraping up their knee as a kid. That is something that happened to them and it's there and it's none of your business <laughs> to ask about yeah. or to ask them about it. Same with a lot of mental health issues. Um, it's it, We're trying to destigmatize it and bring awareness to it. And sometimes that's harsh. And there's been some pushback against the Minhara community to be like, oh, kind of, we want you to water down your artwork and your message for us. I did a whole, an article in um, one of the K-Club magazines that discussed being very frustrated with this because the point of it, especially in Japan, it's going to, it's going to be in your face because otherwise people keep ignoring it. So um, sometimes it needs to be a little loud to be in your face and say, no, you need to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, it's like glorifying. It's, it's crazy because you, you wouldn't say that like somebody with a wheelchair is glorifying being disabled if they decorate their wheelchair. That's ridiculous. No, they're mm -hmm. trying to live their lives. <laughs> yeah. And Minera is the same. We're trying to live our lives and we want people to stop making mental health issues and chronic health issues othered stop telling people that they're ugly for those issues or that they have to hide those issues that they have to hide their scars or anything because that's not what it's about it's about how all of those pieces create a person and all those pieces are inherent to that person and they they exist they're real and it doesn't make them it's just a part of who they are a part of their experience it doesn't make you ugly to have those and wearing things that express those issues is just a way a natural way to express yourself yeah i, I think poovy's kind of hit it on the head to be honest i think it's easy as well to say that menhera glorifies self-injury or glorifies mental health issues and such but actually i think it's easy to say that because we're not seeing enough of it in mainstream media mm -hmm. i think because of the lack of exposure we've been given to it from main media outlets we are kind of having to to do that ourselves so when people come across it it does stick out you're going through your posts and you go between a woman in a bikini on a beach you go between a food advert and then you see this it's it's shocking it will get your attention because it's such a stark contrast to what you're being fed from every kind of mainstream outlet and what many people also feel that they don't want to share and that's fine they don't have to share if they've struggled with mental health issues they don't have to share you know, self-harm scars, they don't have to do any of that. But there is that level of actually mainstream media hasn't been kind to people with chronic illness, to people with mental health issues. So of course it's going to stick out when you see it, no matter how extreme or, or low key it is, you know, you will pay attention. And the fashion is, you know, the fashion and the community, it is about getting you to pay attention. It is about getting you to to look and think and digest what you're seeing. You know, it's I think the best way of, of thinking of it to some degree, at least for me and, and the way I do it is you're sugarcoating something to make it more digestible for other people. Mm -hmm. You know, people won't want to look at it if it's just outright, like loads of text and, and everything else. They're not going to listen. They don't care. We're visual creatures, you know, and, and social media is a visual platform. So you need to be visual in, in your message a lot of the time. And, you know, vent art, graphics, and and the way you you know hold yourself and the and the outfits you wear and, and, and the message you share through that is, is how you will get people to think and pay attention and people having an opinion is better than people not thinking about it at all, right? Mm -hmm. Like I would much rather people think about it and have an opinion than not consider it at all. 
and I think so many people go through their lives without actually having to consider it if it's not something they've been through themselves you know everyone is privy to having a period of low mental health but not everybody has mental health illness not everybody has a, a chronic illness not everybody has a disability that affects them in their lives you know having a busted ankle for a month or two is not going to give you the same experience as somebody who um, has really crippling pain when they, you know, cr chronic pain, chronic illness, who can't conduct themselves, you know, in, in, a, in a typical way day to day. So, you know, it is about shocking people. And it's also about advocating for yourself because nobody's doing it for us. <laughs> That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. The shirt I'm wearing is says, I did not hurt myself. And it features somebody who's got self-harm scars on their wrist. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a pun. It's to remind you that um, when somebody uses a coping mechanism, good or bad, whatever the coping mechanism is, we need to remember they're coping with something. This is mm -hmm. not the, the cause of the illness is not the coping mechanism. And while we as Minhera, we try to, we, we use Minhera fashion as an example of a good coping mechanism. We try to focus on using good, positive, constructive coping mechanisms. Those negative coping mechanisms, they happen and they happen because of something else. So with PTSD, with the shirt, what I'm trying to say is like, maybe a PTSD survivor used a bad coping mechanism, but they did not do this to themselves. Like somebody or something or some event happened they gave them that trauma and they're coping with it the best they can. The focus, people will, will see the negative coping mechanism and focus, so narrowly focus on that and blame that person for that negative coping mechanism instead of recognizing that they're coping with something and we need to work on whatever it is they're coping with and not necessarily demonize somebody for their bad coping mechanism. So it, it's... It's people take that sometimes and say, oh, well, you're glorifying bad coping mechanisms. No, I'm, I'm saying that you can't hide that negative coping mechanism. Instead, you need to acknowledge it and mm -hmm. help them find a better coping mechanism and acknowledge the original hurt and the original illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like how you wouldn't ignore a broken leg, you know, these mental health issues, you don't want to ignore them either. You have to talk about them and it's important to hear these kinds of things. So absolutely. So the next question, uh, we've already spoken about a couple of the misconceptions, but do the both of you have any other misconceptions or misinformation about Minhera that you, I guess, kind of piss you off that you would like to dispel? Speak your truth. I think mistagging <laughs> is regularly the one. This tagging really ticks me off, like, mm -hmm. and especially when you have people who clearly don't give a shit about gay fashion, they don't give a shit about mental health, who talk about it. Like, the worst thing in the world is when somebody who has read one article or seen half a video made by somebody who clearly also doesn't know shit all will come over to you and be like, that is wrong, and this is why. And you're like, bitch, I know where you found that information. It's bullshit, firstly. And secondly, you, you are not invested in any of this anyway. Like you have people who have absolutely no investment in the well-being of yourself or others who will come and police it. And that's what I find most most funny as well is it will be the people who are so, oh yeah, love mental health, be kind to people in their like bio. And then they'll come onto your page like you're disgusting because you're you're making that seem like a good thing. Like you're romanticizing mental illness. It's like, bitch, what what happened to live, laugh, love? in your description like what happened what happened to that you're coming over here with an attitude you're coming onto my page bringing this negative energy like i'm out here like you know i'm having a bad mental health day you're like and you're a bitch as well like yeah okay live laugh love i guess like <laughs> but that happens so often i can't tell you how many times i get these goddamn mental health advocates he will go out of the way to say what you're doing is damaging and offensive. Meanwhile, essentially bullying someone with mental health issues and causing more grief. Like so many of the issues I've had online have revolved around people being like, you're a terrible person. And then being surprised that it affects me and upsets me because I just feel like, what? <laughs> the hell? What? It's, it's always, always a goddamn live, laugh, love bitches. Always them. <laughs> or someone who's just like, jesus saves all in their bio and you're like mm -hmm. god damn it's it's you it's gonna be you you can identify them a mile off it's like you are gonna cause me problems god damn it's 
and it's all because of misinformation same with tiktok as well i've seen so many videos where people are like having hair chan as their picture and i'm like oh god we're in for one and i find it funny because obviously i really like ben hair chan as an art star i i like the story i like the meaning but i i don't think it's like the be all end all i think it's it has got its issues the creator definitely has had some issues and i don't think it's representative of really what men or yami kawaii at all are about like i i don't think it's it really represents either and it certainly doesn't represent men but you get people with that goddamn profile picture come onto your page and they're like didn't men didn't men like create the men chan create the style like i i had one of my friends do like a j fashion style video and they were just showing different ones off and they had like Decora, Fairy K, they had Yami Kawaii, then they had Menhera. And then they were like, those two are the same style. I was like, God, fuck it. I was just there like, no, nope, <laughs> no. Nope. It, oh. it's, it's just uneducated people being the most loud in the room. I think that really ticks me off. And then you try and correct them politely or you're just really nice to them. And then they still get beef with you. And they're like, this is disingenuous because why are you adding hearts to the end of your sentences they're just like i'm trying to tell you (laughs) (laughs) i have i will uh i have a fun story i won't name any names but i did have a Kauai ambassador post a slide from a panel they were giving that had a lot of misinformation about menhera so i i commented on there like oh there's some misinformation here I'd be happy to help you fix it if you'd like. And then they told me that I didn't know anything about Menhera. They were giving the panel and then like blocked me from the slide. And I was like, meanwhile, I'm like, do you know how many panels on Menhera I've given? <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> Is that how do you do you know who I am? <laughs> do you know? Yeah, I was like, I, who who? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's it, I think part of the problem, I see this particularly with TikTok and Facebook, the algorithms promote these people who have no idea what they're talking about. And then they see that there's all these comments now because people are arguing because it's a controversy. And then TikTok mm-hmm. and Facebook are like, ooh, let me promote. Oh, God, so they think yeah. it's a bad opinion and just promote the heck out of it. So some of these TikTok and Facebook arguments are not even real. There's like three stupid people saying <laughs> stupid things. And TikTok and Facebook are just like, I'm gonna show this to everybody now. So I get a little frust- I get a little frustrated on both ends, both the people thinking they know stuff who just talk. And then it's one thing to to try your best and then be open to correction when people are correcting you, you know, in a nice way. I had a chat with um, Kitsune, I forget his full name. I, I had a talk with Maroni, I'll give you a a link later where he had some minor misinformation in one of his videos and I was like oh you know you got most of it right but you got these couple of things wrong and he was like oh okay and that's that's the correct way to respond yeah yeah <laughs> was like oh the, the only source that was in my language had this information so I didn't realize it was wrong I was like that's understandable but here's the correct stuff but yeah I, I also on the other end of that I feel I started to see not so much in the Menhera community but in like the Lolita community I've seen a lot of people my age be like oh, the kids these days are all into this misinformation and I want to remind them, no, it's five idiots on TikTok. TikTok is just promoting the heck out of them. It's, the kids are fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't become old man shaking your Yeah, cane. they're trying <laughs> okay. their best. You know, we as older people, part of the community, we need to help guide them. And we've been there at the beginning when we learned all these wrong things. And I would much rather like help them out and be like, hey, you know, you know, that's not the right information, but here's the right information. Here are some resources, you know, go at it rather than getting mad at them and being like, ah, like, oh, they don't know any better. You know, I, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's just how I feel about it. But some uh, other people can feel a different way. But the, the thing about how if somebody's wrong about something and you try to help correct them, and then they get mad about that. I feel like when I was younger and not as mature as I am now, I guess, I don't know. But like, I would definitely, if somebody were to correct me on something, I would take it, I would be offended about it. But now I'm just like, okay, yeah, I don't know everything. And so I'm glad that you told me this so that I can learn from it and get better. So. Kids are like though, isn't it? Like I say this with peace and love as somebody who works in education. Kids are fucking stupid. 
but they're not malicious they're mm-hmm. not malicious with it when you're a teenager when you're a kid you think you know everything yeah. I was the same I thought I was like brainiac yeah 101 I was like I'm I'm really clever I was not I was not really clever I didn't know what and I would have taken it personally as well if somebody said actually like in a nice way even if they came really nice I'd be like oh yeah well I know what I'm doing mm. and now as an adult I'm like oh, okay yeah I can kind of accept that or do my own research into it to, to kind of further expand what I know and what I'm sharing mm. you know and, and I think people do forget that kids will say dumb stuff kids will go with whatever information reaches them first but that doesn't mean they're doing it maliciously and it's only a, a vocal few that kind of ruin it for everyone else and I feel like gatekeeping something because of a few like the vocal minority isn't productive it's it's not gonna encourage people to feel safe and confident in approaching other people in future like approaching people who are you know further embedded in the community further experienced you know gatekeeping doesn't do nothing for nobody you know it's the same with any other j fashion as well like i gyaru tiktok gets so much crap you know, and then you get like young gyarus who get put off of it because of misinformation from dumb people. But then you have a lot of kids who are just trying their best. You know, mm. it's it's like people who get angry at those flappy hats. Why are you angry at it? We all <laughs> it's a duality of of a J fashion wearer. You 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 laugh at the flappy hats, but you also wore the flappy hats. <laughs> it's a duality. You were the cringe, and now you accept the cringe. Like it's <laughs> it's you know you you have Still to the cringe. Have to, like, yeah. <laughs> You, embrace it <laughs> you, you've got to kind of you can't take yourself that seriously you got to just you know you got to be patient as well for, for the love of god people got to learn some patience you know like yeah if you if you get tired of a conversation you can just politely dip you don't have to stay there but like if you don't have allow people to try and start conversations these kids will never learn either like if they get it wrong you politely correct them and you try and engage them in a conversation or whatever politely hopefully at some point they will take that on board you can't just like just actually no nope, nothing for you because they get it wrong once like I was a goddamn idiot like honestly I look at some of the chords I came up with as a kid for a leader Damn. oh it's bad I'm surprised it wasn't posted on 4chan or something it's horrendous it's really bad so yeah it, it's it's just trying not to, to gatekeep it as well from from people like literally in any conflict in the world in any negative situation it's always the vocal minority that ruin it for the majority you know you can apply that to literally anything the people who are the most experienced aren't usually the ones that are loudest because especially online tiktok does it promote accuracy it promotes whatever gets the most comments whatever gets the most engagement and usually that's because of mm-hmm. arguments mm-hmm. absolutely well i have a giant list of misconceptions to oh, go over okay <laughs> sure let's get mm-hmm. into it which i'll start i'll start i also i remember the art show is called menhera exhibit and they are there are more menhera art shows but menhera exhibit is like the one that really kicked off the vent art movement and be, was a community place for people to gather um also where izaki and menhera chan got a little bit of their start mm-hmm. fun back. i might have to head off soonish okay i will this is getting fairly you don't have, no, that's not speeding you up even if I have to dip out and you you two continue that's not an issue I know it's late for you, you can just there. put a little gravestone a little gravestone where I was and just Addie died no you know, she she she's deceased no. <laughs> well actually in that case is there anything else let's let you finish off and then I'll rant after you're you have to go <laughs> not bad okay um I suppose like if I was just going to answer one of the questions before I have to dip mm-hmm. um, because I, I feel like the, the one thing that I want to to try and kind of promote is is the one where can anyone wear men hair of fashion I would say I would personally say yes I would say as long as you kind of respect the ideals of what is behind the intention so making it accessible making it accurate making it kind of researched I think that's the same with anything you know anything that involves kind of a a more marginalized group of people um, you need to do your research when it comes to dipping your toes into that world I would personally not feel uncomfortable with somebody who hasn't had the exact same experiences as me wearing it I wouldn't be like how dare you how dare you wear that have you you don't know what I've been through like I, I don't care like I think as long as you you come into it with the best of intentions you're willing to learn and listen as well and, and kind of educate yourself and also maybe just try and come into the community like say hey you know menhera chat box oh, drop, don't drop don't drop by <laughs> menhera chat box and stuff you know 
if you're if you're willing to immerse yourself in it and research I, I really think it should be for everyone because I do feel everybody is entitled and will experience periods of low mental health I think that's in a very common thing as, as human beings everybody will have very low points in their life and even though that may not quantify as a mental illness it doesn't mean that you can't express that like if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts because something bad has happened in your life and, and that is really affecting you and you're grieving that is something you should feel comfortable expressing and you should be able to to almost use to to soothe yourself and I think in that sense then hair fashion should be for everyone it should be accessible to everyone in that sense as well you know I think just as, as long as you make sure you're not crossing into a boundary that could trigger or harm others you know I think I mean this necklace that I'm wearing currently I would say it's probably a little too far as a general into kind of the guru yami side of things as opposed to the menhera side of things but I usually try and trigger warn stuff like this on my like story posts like when I say I'm uploading something I usually try and add a little trigger warning or content warning for that but making things kind of accessible and kind of open for everybody to view comfortably as well it is is something that's important you know you can discuss heavy topics without having to slap blood everywhere like people don't see people seem to forget that don't just throw blood on an outfit and and that be the intention that's not you're not doing nothing that's not progressive you're just you're just like a tit um you know you're not you're not helping no one with that all right like put the put the snazaroo paint away and chill out um so yeah I I just think that everybody should be able to wear it and I it's I wanted to answer that before I head off because that is a question I get a lot personally I know so many people get concerned about wearing it because they don't want to offend people who are within the community who do suffer with chronic illness disability mental health issues and I mean obviously again I, I can only speak for myself um I'm not the head honcho in any of Menhera or not by any means like some sort of representative in that sense but I personally think it is actually accessible in that sense as well I feel like everybody will have periods of low mental and being able to express that and soothe yourself with that is incredibly empowering and important and I think again normalizes actually that everybody can feel like shit and deal with shit and that's okay before you have to skedaddle addy do you have anything that you would like to promote any last words see i would recommend going checking out the menhera chat box on facebook it's kind of like a western community or more western based and kind of like non-japanese obviously there's japanese people there but kind of more western based community that you can access people are very friendly you can put your outfits you can get feedback crits find out about brands find out about kind of more obscure art it's a great place about finding all that stuff actually like it's really great whether you're a small artist whether you just want to vent and chat and, and everything it's a really nice community there and it's it, it needs more people to go join as well it's a, it's a good place it's a good space and other than that you're welcome to check out check out my instagram you don't have to but it is there and you're always welcome to ask me any questions there as well i do try and answer all of them and try to make resources fairly regularly that i i try Try to be as well informed on it as I can before making them. And yeah, I, I, I recommend that. And also check out Grumpy Bunny UK. I'm throwing that in there as well. And Poovy and Grumpy Bunny UK. I buy a lot from Grumpy Bunny UK. They're a really lovely person. Great stockist of kind of Harajuku fashion, Harajuku brands. And they do stock a lot of kind of research, Yami Kawaii pieces and then Hera pieces as well. So they're a good place to check out too. Oh, Ed, what are your what are your tags on Instagram and TikTok? I'm glad you asked, Poovy. <laughs> My handles on Instagram and TikTok are both Addy Harajuku. Fairly self-explanatory, but A D D Y and then Harajuku. All one, all one thing. No spaces, no dots, no underscores or anything. And I make basically the same kind of content between the two. I do share basically the same info both spaces. But yeah, it's J fashion based, Kawaii lifestyle based. And obviously my predominant style that I wear and it's really what I resonate with is is Yami Kwame and Menhera. So you'll see that a lot on my page as well as a few other things where I dip my toes into just faffing about with the styles, which is fun. Um, but yeah. Thank you for hanging out with us today. I'm so happy. We finally got to have a little chat together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again. Across yeah. the water. <laughs> I know you guys are so far away. It sucks, man. Like... It's a lonely ass island over here. Oh. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for thinking of me when you were creating this video. Um, it's been lovely to speak to you both. You're both like a big inspiration for me. Like I love everything you do. And even like this is like a dream being able to like talk to both of you. Like <laughs> yo, it's it's very exciting. So thank you for having me. And hopefully 
I've I've done everybody some justice, some some sweet sweet justice alongside Poovy when it comes to to Menhera, and hopefully this will, will help spread better information as well. Thank All you. Right, I'm I'm uh, I'm head off. Poovy, night, take night. it from here. You tight. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> Hey. All right, list All right. of min min mintons misconceptions. <laughs> so many. Um, so this one's an older one that I think has kind of died down. I hear, I see a lot of people call it Minhera K. Um, mm. It's actually not Minhera K. So the K suffix means like stereotypes of or things associated with. So it doesn't mean style. So for example, fairy K. The K means things associated with fairies or that aesthetic. It's not style. So when you say Menhera K, you're saying things associated with Menhera or stereotypes of Menhera. And Menhera K is almost entirely used derogatorily, often in sexist ways to like, like a uh, call someone who's like an obsessed girlfriend or someone who's faking illness to be for attention usually usually a woman usually in a sexist manner so we don't use menhera k just menhera whereas menhera came from the the menhera community based on mental health or the english so that that's one misconception so another misconception i've heard is that oh i want to get into menhera but it's out of my budget so the reason people hear that misconception is because they think i have to buy a menhera chan 75 dollars listen flavor t-shirt mm. the menhera <laughs> Well, you can buy that shirt to be Minhera if you would like. A Minhera is very much about DIY. Uh, it's very indie focused, both in Japan and the Western. Most most of the designers are indie. I would say the third most popular indie designer for Minhera, Cherry Cheesy, though I don't know if she's still doing Minhera work. I just just a artist. <laughs> yeah, doing I, stuff. didn't they recent like. What was it last year they closed their store because they were doing cardigans for a while weren't they yes they did so they they stopped doing menhera then they did yumi kawaii uh, then they took a break from fashion entirely and mm -hmm. did fan art like really really adorable fan art and now i don't know if they're doing fashion again they do have uh they do have like a red bubble and a couple of other shops where mm -hmm. you can still buy some of their menhera stuff but now they're doing i don't know how to describe it it's like like aesthetic art and mm -hmm. it does have some of the old Minhera and their old characters in it, but it's also like other aesthetic. It's all of it's lovely, <laughs> all of it's high quality and lovely. But yeah, just just an artist, and that's 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 the third most popular Minhera designer worldwide, I would say. Um, so you don't have to go buy that seventy five dollar t shirt. You can DIY your own shirt. You can look up on Redbubble, find something that speaks to you. And because Minhera doesn't have a strict aesthetic or strict like silhouette. All you really need is a shirt. You can wear your Menhera shirt with something comfy. Like Addie said, her pajamas are Menhera. My pajamas are Menhera. <laughs> so actually very cheap style to get into. And then echoing echoing what Addie said earlier about Menhera being for everyone. Um, you do not have to be mentally ill or chronically ill to wear Menhera because you are still working to destigmatize the style, the, the issues and um, bring awareness to the issues when you're wearing menhara. So you don't you don't have to personally identify with the menhara event piece you're wearing to wear it. You can. But that said, a hundred percent of people who have asked me that question do have some mental health or some chronic illness issue, and they just felt like they weren't sick enough for menhara, which is mm -hmm. makes my heart go, oh no! <laughs> you don't have to be sick enough for menhara. It's for everybody. Menhera is not, uh, Menhera is also just about dealing with day-to-day -day stress. There's a lot of Menhera prints in Japan about schoolwork. I hate these exams. Mm -hmm. I'm going to vent about it. I made a Menhera shirt. That's that's all you need. You don't have to be anything particular. Then on Izaki Bizoku, I will say, I won't I won't go, get into all of the drama because some of it is not relevant in my opinion. Izaki Bizoku is a gay man living in Japan, has had to deal with Menhera issues himself. So he is he is a Menhera. That said, he is, despite having gotten his start with Menhera exhibit partially and really becoming famous partially because of the Menhera community, he has been trying to distance himself from the Menhera community and has unfortunately spread a lot of misinformation about it because he wants people to focus more on his particular type of yami kawaii and like his, his brand and his icon. So while I don't have like, while I don't have anything against people who support Minhara Chan and Minhara Chan works and Izaki Bazoko's works. I will say, please don't listen to anything he says about Min 
Minhara, it's wrong. <laughs> just, just don't listen to it. He's pissed off the Japanese Minhara community a lot with some of the things he said and the Western community. So just don't, don't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> we touched around this subject, but triggering content in Minhara, because Minhara deals with mental health and chronic health issues, it can sometimes feature content that people will find triggering. And unfortunately, it's just, it's a balance. Sometimes you have to be edgy and loud and explicit to get, to get that message across. And that may be triggering. And that doesn't mean it's not Minhara just because it's triggering. It's just a careful balance of making sure if you're putting something on there that might be triggering, it needs to be on there for a reason. You don't put gore and blood just for gore and blood. If it's there, it needs to serve a purpose. It needs to be there for a reason. And when you're posting online, you know, it's easy to pop a trigger warning in there if you're not mm -hmm. sure. As Addie said too, Minhara, Minhara is for everyone in that if there is something, like if you want to do something Minhara, there is a Minhara for you. There is something specific for you that you can do, absolutely. But Minhara is also not for everyone in the case that you don't, if you want to self-express through your fashion, you don't have to do Menhera. Menhera is just, the Menhera fashion is just one type of fashion you can do. There are lots and lots and lots of others. And I did a little blog post on these mm. styles. A lot of times I, I find this, this uh, it's people who want to experiment with heavier makeup who are looking to self-express. And to them, I recommend looking into Living Doll, uh, the Living Doll movement. Toshi is a great resource for that. And that's about changing, that is about creating art and self-expression with your body, turning your body into a canvas for art and self-expression. So while heavy makeup is not menhara, because not everybody can do heavy makeup, so it's not inherently accessible, you can absolutely self-express through makeup um, in the living doll style or in any style you want. I would always tell people that first and foremost, you look for your way of self-expression, and then you fit it into whatever boxes you want later. So if you're looking to self-express, self-express first. And if that self-expression ends up being Minhara, well, that's great. Then it's Minhara. But if that self-expression ends up being something else, like, you know, like Decora, it's, that's fine. It's still, you're still self-expressing. You're still welcome to hang out with us in the Minhara community. Um, uh, this is not a Lolita at heart situation. You can be a Minhara at art at heart and not wear the fashion. That's perfectly fine. You don't, you don't have to fit yourself into that box if you don't want to either. So for any newbies that are out there, and if somebody wants to try wearing this style or yeah their tryout Minhara how should they start do you have any advice for them and how do they find other people who are also involved in the Minhara community oh great question so Minhara chat box is the Facebook group um, that Addie mentioned before I'm admin of the group Addie is a mod on there we have some other lovely mods on there as well that's a good Western community in the Facebook group. There's also a Minhara Discord that's run by FY Minhara. It is linked, I believe, both on in the chat box and uh, FY Minhara at tum on Tumblr's site. Then FY Minhara at Tumblr is basically your only English language source for getting information about Minhara directly from Japan. So they collect all the shops. It can be very hard to keep track of Minhara shops because they pop up and go away because they're run with by Minhara, mm. <laughs> people who have mental health and chronic health issues. They will uh, translate articles. I think they also have a link to the English translations of Minhara Chan, all of this. Uh, so those are those are great resources for you. And yeah, we we love to answer any questions if you have any. And yeah, just pick pick a topic you feel you feel like you want to explore and start with that. <laughs> I will say um, it, 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 it may feel hard if you're going into Minhara from another style that was very accessory based. Um, mm. Coming out of Lolita into Minhara, I struggled for a bit. Like, I'm not wearing enough things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you get used to it. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like we've already gone through a lot of very helpful advice for newbies. And basically, the big thing that I've learned about Minhara is that you don't have to be super over the top it's whatever is comfortable for you whatever is accessible but before i say goodbye Huvi, do you have any last words or things that you would like to promote i know that uh didn't you have like a new collection recently or am i tripping i don't know what's 
<laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, feel free to, yeah, let me know what are some things that you would like to promote. Oh, sure. I, of course, have my brand. <laughs> um, I do a lot of Minhara work in my in my work, my shirt, something I made. Um, but I also do like Lolita, Gurukawai. I do all sorts of crazy stuff over at poovithel.com. Uh, you can feel free to check that out if you feel like perusing. The last collection I did was Lolita. I should have more. I'm going to be releasing new Minhara uh, for Teco in December. Yeah, lots of, you can find me, Poovithel, if you Google that, everything that pops up is me. It's me on TikTok, um, Facebook, Instagram, all the fun. And thank you, Christina, for doing this video. Um, it's really, it's really difficult for us in the Minhara community to reach out to people about misinformation. So I really appreciate you coming out and saying, okay, I'm not part of this community, but I want people to learn about it and finding people who know about it to spread that knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you too. Oh my gosh. Thank you for your time, your knowledge, for all of your efforts in just like the whole J fashion community in general. You are an icon, a legend, like literally you're, you're amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much again but let's say goodbye to the viewers <laughs> bye thank y'all for watching thank you bye bye